Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kiki and Kibitz. It's Mary. Happy Easter to all of those that celebrate. I am here today with a very special interview. I've been waiting on this for a while. Let's just say this is Mocha is a Big Fat Scammer, part four. We have the ladies that were part of the movement to take Mocha down, and I brought them all together in one spot so we could all talk about their experiences with Mocha and everything that's occurred in the past year. So first, I want to introduce Nicole. She is the um, administrator <laughs> of the Facebook group that is the bane of Mocha's being, to say it lightly, right, Nicole? He hates your group. Oh, he does. Okay. Then we have Becky, who is a former love interest of Mocha, and she's going to talk about her um, experiences with him. Hi, Becky. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Mary. Thanks for having me. And then we have Tammy, who is another former love interest of Mocha, and we're going to get into the nitty gritty. Hi, Tammy. Thanks for joining me. Hi, Mary. Nice to talk to you. I'm so happy to see all three of you. We have been talking for the past year or so. I'm so happy to have all three of you in the same place. And um, let's get into it. My subscribers know that I'm serious if I break out a slideshow. And we all know that mocha is a serious subject. So I'm going to break out one of my famous slideshows. So give me one second as I share my screen. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to get into a little bit of the background behind Mocha and what's been going on for the past year, okay? Because some of my new subscribers may not exactly know what's been going on. So you guys remember Mocha. He was on Life After Lockup two seasons ago. He was Montana Mills' manager, music producer, whatever he called himself, and you guys remember how upset he was that Mike came out of prison and that he was getting married, Justine was pregnant. He took it really, really personally. And the fans were all like, what is up with this dude? So we have Mocha here. And on April 13th of last year, he did a live interview with Lord Lucan. And there was a tragic um, incident that occurred during uh, during the interview, and he shot someone, Lendor Con Conrad Coney Jr., okay? This man was not armed. He had a baseball bat, but Mocha decided to, to take the gun that he was holding on his lap during a live YouTube interview and shoot him. So after this um, incident occurred, a Facebook group popped up. That caught my eye. And at the time, it had 32 members. Nikki, how many members do you have in the group now? I'm not sure. Close to 4,000. There you go. It started off with 32 members, and now we're up to almost 4,000 members of the group. And you guys see the name of the Facebook group. Victims of Lydell, a.k.a. Mocha Blast, the Serial Scammer. And this is when I was first introduced to Nikki. Okay, so I'm just going to get out of this for a second to stop screen sharing. Now, Nikki, last year, when the um, incident occurred, mm -hmm. how this all started rolling, like with the Facebook group, let's get into the background. Well, okay. So he had been dealing with my friend for a couple years already and within when she, when she first met him she had everything going great for her and everything else she had been seeing him on and off like throughout the year throughout the years and um just everything just started going <laughs> her life started going to hell like she couldn't so afford she anything. was seeing mocha um, yes on and off okay yes was she also seeing Lindor at the same yes. time? Okay. Yes, Lindor was the boyfriend. Mocha right. was just whenever. Okay, and this is Bree, the woman whose house the shooting occurred at, right. okay? So right. now Bree was kind of on both sides of the fence, you could say, with Lindor and Mocha. 
Was yeah. she like trying to pit them against each other? You could say in a way from your knowledge. So I don't think she wanted either one of them to know about each other. Okay. Because every, um, I swear to God, every month, here we go again. She'd be like, I'm done with Mocha. And then she would, here she is crying about what he's doing to her and whatever and whatnot. She always had an excuse that she had to, oh, she had to leave him slowly and this and that. Now, I'm not sure if they, like, what he had over her, but she was always like, no, I have to leave him slowly. I can't just leave him fast. Like, she was scared of him. Right, right. So the woman that we're talking about, I just want to share here, because she actually appeared on an episode of Life After Lockup. Yeah. So this is Brie, and this is the scene of where the shooting occurred. Exactly. So Lendor came in through those doors. Mocha was sitting there with his back to the doors. Yep. No, Mocha was sitting inside with his back to the TV. With his back to the TV. Mm -hmm. And... Lindor came out through those doors with a baseball bat, right, Nikki? So, no, no. Okay. No. You tell Lindor the story. never had a baseball bat. Okay. In the investigation report, the detective's report that I have, the baseball bat was found by the front door. Okay. Brianne said she never moved it. She never did anything. Liddell also said in his 911 call that he was not moving out of the backyard. Which means, how does the bat found at the front yard, at the front door then? Lindor right. came out them doors without a bat. He was right. not armed. So after the um, incident occurred, when you spoke to Bree, what did she say? I never spoke to her. Okay. I only, I only was able to, um, email and messenger her because um the police had her phone and she always said the police have my phone i can't talk i can't do this i can't do that there's a gag there's a gag order i didn't realize at the time that there really was never a get there was never was a gag order it was her and him her and mocha making up that there's a gag order so they don't have to answer people's questions so how did this Facebook group come about, Nikki? The group came about because I told her I was going to warn the public about him. I was going to go online and I was going to drag him online because that's where he likes to find the women that he scams. For one, he likes to make an online persona of right. something he is, which he isn't. Um, it's just so that's where I was going to destroy his character at. That's where we were going to let everybody know who he was and how he's dangerous. Right, exactly. So when you started this Facebook group originally to character um, assassinate him, to let everybody know what kind of a real person we're dealing with, then the woman started coming out of the woodwork because I know yes. there's a lot of it, women and okay. we're going to get so, into that. Okay, so I made one post. One right. post because I... I have a lot of followers in the Las Vegas area. I made one post about him, said he's dangerous and he's a known scammer. And right. that um, he killed my friend in what he calls self-defense in his cowardly act. So um, then women started coming, right? And then he had like a friend or something come there and come to my messages and say, oh, I can't believe you're posting this, blah, blah, blah. So by that, I took that as a, wait a minute, you're trying to, <laughs> you're trying to stop me. From right, you're trying to that. silence That's not me. not going to work. Right. So I'm going to make a group. And then the group just started and it just caught fire. And now, I don't know, women just found it and are just coming to my messages, telling me about what I could say that I personally... I personally spoke to, I want to say, 10 women, <laughs> either by DMs or people that you sent over to me to talk to me, at least 10 women. Right. Okay, so I can imagine how many women you spoke to, Nikki. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. When I first started on this story and last it keeps year- going. <laughs> 
last year, guys, when I first started on the story, I expected maybe three, four women. I started looking through this group. And then when the women started contacting me, I was mind blown. I was mind blown. Yeah. I, I thought I thought maybe he had just scamming maybe my friend and maybe a couple other women and whatever. But then when it ended up being from my original post, I had about 10 to 15 women contact me and they were women that he scammed or women that were very close to women he has scammed. So that's when I was like, wait a minute, this is bigger than what I thought. Let me make a group. Right. So how much money has Brie told you that Mocha has, has scammed from her? Okay. Listen, this is, he, she, she never told me an exact amount, but when I found out that she loaned him money for his jewelry, I was like, hold up a minute. Nah, -uh. this guy that's saying, okay. So let, let's start from, let's start back when I first found out about Mocha. Okay. Right. So she was talking about Mocha and whatever and a group of girls or whatever. And my friend tells me, one of my other friends tells me, have you checked out Bree's, Bree's supposed new boyfriend? And mind you, this was why she was, her and Lynn were broke up for a period. Okay. 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 And I said, no, I haven't checked. I, I haven't seen him. She goes, she goes, girl, he looks like a scammer. Yes. Take, a, take a look at him. There's something fishy about this. So I looked at it and I started like going into it. And then I'm like, well, maybe he does music out the country. Maybe he's like somebody, whatever. But then I really started looking into it and I'm like, hold up, wait a minute. And then another mutual friend called me one night and was like, hey, we have a problem. I said, with what? And she said, oh, Brie loaned him like $8,000. I said, for what? She said, I guess for jewelry, and she's scared she's not going to get the money back. And, and we're going to show the ring that Braid lent him $8,000 for in a bit, guys. Okay, Girl. we're going to get to all this. <laughs> and this so is I like an like, onion. This is like an onion with so many layers. Right. And Nikki's and just so one layer, okay? <laughs> right, okay. So then anyways, um... I don't know what happened. She was trying to say, oh, he's going to get me back, whatever. But she's steadily losing money. And she's steadily talking about, I need another job. I need to figure something out. I don't have money. I don't have this. Um, my credit cards are maxed out. All kinds of crap was going on. And, and, and then every month it would be like, oh, Mocha's doing this. Mocha's doing that. And I even confronted her one time and was like, hey, how are you going to be with a scammer? He's out here scamming all kinds of women. You don't care about the other women he's scamming? Because now it seems like like, like you're with him on this. You know right. what I mean? She goes, that she's she almost me, like an accomplice. She told me straight out, I don't care about them. I don't care what, they, what he does to them. <sighs> Becky, I want to ask you. How did yes. you find the Facebook group? Well, um, Lydell and I were having conversations uh, back and forth when I was trying to get my money back. And when I would say something to him, he would say, oh, go ahead and talk to your friends in the group. And I kept saying, what group are you talking about? I said, I'm my own person. I make up my own mind. So he was the one that actually brought it to your attention. He led me to the group. Dumbass. Because he was saying it. And then all of a sudden... When I, the last time I had texted him about, hey, where's my money? You know, you said you're going to pay me through the refi. Um, I know a refi doesn't take more than 30 days. He stopped talking to me. And all of a sudden I was on Facebook and that group popped up and I was like, you have got to be kidding. Is this the group he's talking about? So I messaged, I joined the group, then I messaged Nikki and then I was like, okay. And then I messaged her. She got back to me. And then I kind of went out of the group a bit because I'm like, I'm not going to get my money back if he knows I'm in the group. And then finally I was like, oh, forget it. I went back in the group and I read everything and my heart just sunk because there were so many women at the same time period. I'm talking several, several, I mean, in all these different states, it was just like, okay. What I could imagine. I could imagine. Tammy, how did you find the group? Um, I was actually out to dinner with a friend one night and she seemed kind of like something was heavy on her heart. And she says, hey, girl, 
there's something I got to tell you about that guy you've been dating, Lydell. And I was like, what's up? And she said, so this Facebook group came across my feed and it was about him being a scammer. And she's like, there's some really heavy stuff in there. And I think you need to join the group and take a look at it. And she's like, I'm so sorry. And I immediately requested to join the group. And, and at just this like, point, how long were you seeing him? Oh, my gosh. This was about a year. Okay. Yeah. And, and you like, had to find, yeah, and you had to find this out through Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Mind you, this is the year he was seeing Brianne too. Yes. This is the year Linda passed. So he was basically seeing all three at the same time. Oh, there were more than, there were more. more. I know, but I'm saying right here, we have three. <laughs> yeah. We have yeah. Three, and Becky yeah. and Tammy. I mean, it's like mind oh, there so many more at the same time, though, that came to surface through the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And Tammy and I were only a week apart. Ugh, unbelievable. Only a week apart. I met him in March. And. So once all of this stuff started coming out about him, I started to do a series of um, articles for my word on the street reality site. So I have part one, two, and three about Mocha, all these women that he scammed. Um, there was a time that he was trying to get different women to give him money for this controller board that he wanted to buy for his fantasy studio. So he's scamming all these women, seeing a whole bunch of women at the same time. And these women think that their relationships with him are um, exclusive, but mm -hmm. they're not. They're not. So now, finally, it got some local news coverage. Okay. So, Nikki, huh. when you were contacted by the local, by local eight news in Vegas, okay, huh. what, what went through your head? Like, where you were like, fantastic, this is a way to get this out more? Or did you think that like Mocha was going to get angrier and, what did you think about this opportunity? Oh, I didn't care. I want him to get angrier. I'm not worried about him. But I was, I was, I was glad that he was gonna get um exposure, especially local exposure. Exactly. And he wasn't too happy about that because mm -mm. right after the local news came out, and I'm going to drop a link in my um description box so you guys could go check out. The local news, all three ladies were on here talking about Mocha and their experiences, you know, so he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy. So I think a day or two after it aired, he posted this to his story. So many folks are starting to follow me and thanking me. How a news channel who tried to destroy me is doing just the opposite, is giving me Notoriety I didn't want. One-sided narratives are very dangerous. I would have given Channel 8 an exclusive report with both Bree and I. Now, when Channel 8 contacted him for the record, he cursed at the reporter and hung up on her. Okay? Yeah. So I would have given Channel 8 an exclusive report with both Bree and I, but I would rather do it in court as I am being sued. And we're going to get into that in a minute. For Brianna... Renna to say I am scared to go to court is laughable. That used to be my second home. Either way, it's women who are adding me and laughing at that poor excuse of reporting and the so-called victims. Okay, so because Mocha is, is really pissed off about this group, pissed off about all of the coverage that he's getting, he's being exposed. All of these women are coming out of the woodwork. So he does what he does best. He goes on rants, like I call them, word salad rants going on and on. And now he attacks his victims because that's the only thing he knows how to do. But first he has to attack Nikki, who is the um, administrator of this Facebook group. And Nikki, honestly, I think he thinks you are his number one enemy. <laughs> I'm serious. I feel like Good. that he he had he has it in his head that you are his number one enemy. So 
He tries to slander her, calling her all sorts of names, as you guys can see here. I'm not going to repeat it. But, I mean, he he's disgusting. He He's disgusting. Like, right here, he says, imagine minding your own business, not knowing anything that is going on. Severe back pain. Doing a live interview by a blogger who wants to shit on you at every turn and then get ran down by a bat-wielding dude you never knew existed, screaming, he's here to kill me. Knowing that Stephanie Nicole Leonard celebrating thinking I got killed makes me think as I read the text, text messages between her and Bree and just said, I wonder if SNL8 a dude on to come there and kill me. So he's trying to imply that you were involved in this whole mix and you sent Len over there to kill him. Girl, he reaches like nobody. Reaches. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I have never talked to Lynn outside of Brienne not being there. So he is reaching here going on and on about Nikki. Like and I would egg somebody on to go over there to deal with you at Bree's house. Come on. Like Nikki, Bree's killing with both of you. What was your relationship with Len? Like what was your extent of your relationship with him? Because Mocha. Okay. He was a friend and he was a friend <laughs> via Bree. That was Brianne's man. Right. Okay. So we went on vacations together. We went, we would always go out to eat, go out to drink. Whenever somebody had a party, it was always Lynn was there. That's where it was. And that's where it ends. Me and Lynn were friends through Brie. And Nikki, I actually, I want to praise you for doing this because not many people would step up the way that you did after Lynn's death. And like you said, he was a friend through Brie. So it mm -hmm. could have been easy for you to just turn away and say, I'm not going to get involved with this. But you stepped up. You stepped up. And this is just some of the stuff. That's because I felt I just. It, he did too much to too many people. Yeah. So as you see here, guys, here's a message that was sent to Nikki from someone. Here's a post. Okay. I mean, there was so much in this group against Mocha. It was like, you couldn't ignore it. You know, you know how sometimes they say, okay, one or two women, maybe they just gave him the money, but there was so many women during the same time period, guys. So it was so unsettling. And meanwhile, Mocha's just going on and on about the studio. He's building this brand new state state-of-the-art studio, but he's asking women for money to pay his cell phone bill at, you know, basic necessities to send money to his daughter, which we're going to get into in a minute, because Becky, you did that for him. Yes, I did. At one point. So Mocha, who claims that he has all this money, has a $20,000 $20, judgment against him. Nikki, what did you find out about this? Because I know you were the one that dug this up. Okay, so this is a judgment that we found against him um, by a woman in California that he said he was going to pay her back and he never did. He still has never paid on this judgment. Um, I don't know. It is just, it's just unbelievable. But this just goes to show. Right. It's a scammer. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. A woman exactly. sued you on one. <laughs> exactly. So he has a $20,000 judgment against him from one woman. So now I want to get into Tammy. Okay. We have text messages between Tammy and Mocha. Okay. Because Mocha tries to say that they didn't have an exclusive relationship. Is that right, Tammy? That's one of his defenses that when he's trying to drag you through the dirt, that you guys were not exclusive? Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's trying to say that now, but fast forward to a court date that we had, he kind of recants that and says, yeah, I was in a relationship with Tammy for a year. I have um, the transcripts from that, that day in court. 
So as you guys see here on the right, there's a conversation between Mocha and Tammy that occurred on May 7th, um, almost a month um, after he shot Lendor. So he's basically, what is he trying to tell you about the incident? Like, when did you find out about the incident, Tammy? Let's start uh, there. Yeah, it was a couple of days after the shooting when he reached out to me through text message. Um, he, I believe he was trying to come to Phoenix to see me. And okay. then he had a backtrack and say, I, I have to head, he was on his way here and he had to head back to Vegas. He had some stuff to deal with. And I'm like, what's going on? And he had sent me pictures of his car that was all smashed in and stuff. And that's when I found out about the shooting. So then as we can see here, through the text messages, he tells you that he has feelings that came back for somebody in the past. How did he try to break up with you? He just said that after the shooting, he had a lot to deal with. Things were only going to get worse from here on out. He didn't have time for a relationship with me, um, much less anyone else. And basically said that he had feelings for Brie that had come back, which led me to question because he said, I guess it came out during the interview that this was her boyfriend or whatever um, during the, the interview with the police right after the shooting. Right. But it didn't make sense to me because if this is your girlfriend, but now you're saying that feelings just came back, like it wasn't adding up. So what did Mocha tell you about the day of the shooting? Did he tell you he was at Bree's house? Where did he tell you the shooting occurred? Did you have any idea of the circumstances? Yeah. Well, we had a whole conversation because I'm sure I'm not the only woman who felt this way. Because again, when you're thinking you're in an exclusive relationship with someone and in the, the report, it comes out saying that he's at his girlfriend's home. So of course, like any woman would, I confronted him and said, hold up, why does it say that you're at your girlfriend's home? I'm your girlfriend. Right, as you can see oh, here I with the text messages, you were like, what is going on? Just tell right. me what's happening. Yeah. Right, and his response was, um, she would say anything to cover my ass. I'm looking at 20 years at least if I go down for this. Unbelievable. So Tammy, you gave him $2,500 for his board. Okay. I did. Now this is the famous board that he was showing off on his um, Instagram because he is um, apparently building this huge music studio. What do you know about that, Tammy? Um, yeah, so again, thinking I'm in an exclusive relationship with this guy and we're building together and this studio is going to be part of our future. Um, he says that he needs money to purchase this board for the studio. Um, asks me for the down payment for it. Um, gives me the direct information to the guy who's selling it. I'm having conversations back and forth with this guy. Um, sent him the deposit. Lydell had asked for a screenshot once the deposit was sent and what the instructions were from there. He was supposed to meet up with the guy a couple of days later with the remainder of the cash for the board. How much money do you um, estimate that you gave Mocha during your relationship? To add it up about Close to $6,000 probably. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So once you started speaking out against him in this group and all of the ladies were getting together, Mocha does what he does best and he strikes out and he starts attacking you. But this attack was like, okay, it like it really like hit me too in the stomach when I saw this. So he apparently took pictures of you without your knowledge while you were sleeping? Yep. He tries to spin it saying I passed out, but yeah, no, I was asleep. 
And this is during the time that you guys are supposedly in, a, in an exclusive relationship. Yeah. So but that, that that's what struck me the most. Yeah, it was really weird. That picture was taken when he had me come out to Vegas to visit him. And that whole thing just went left and got really weird. Even the home that I was in where that picture was taken. Looking back, it's it's just crazy. I'm sorry that happened to you. I yeah, really it, am. It was I mean, a lot. I mean, as a woman, I, I couldn't imagine that happening to me. And for him to try to use that kind of stuff against you, knowing what he did. Just, but that's what he does. Exactly. That's when anybody starts to speak out against him or fall out of line because he tries to keep you in line, he attacks yeah. you on his social media. Textbook does it to everyone. So now, Becky, your experience yes. with him wasn't any better. I mean, he, how much... We're going to get into your list of how much <laughs> money he owes you because Becky yeah. has very, very um, detailed records of how much. Right. I, do. I have every receipt, every, receipt, every, every Zell, every bank tramp. Yeah, everything. Okay. So how did your relationship start with him, Becky? Uh, we, met on, we met on Facebook dating in March. Um, we matched. He reached out to me. Uh, we started talking, we exchanged numbers, texting, then phone conversations. And then we had FaceTime because he said he wanted to let me know he wasn't a catfish. Okay. And then- How kind weeks, of him? Yes, right. That he was real and that he was looking for a relationship. Um, and then um, in April, he came out and seen me. Right. And then we, we met each other in person. He- was saying that he was looking for some his forever best friend and that he was looking for someone that you know he could fall in love because he had never been loved honestly and stuff like that. And then in May, I mean at the end of April, I went out to Vegas and spent three days with him in Vegas. And then it it went on from there. See the people think that okay, we've met this guy online and we're just talking to him online and we're we're just sending him money, but they don't understand. It's not like that. He meets you. He establishes a relationship with you. He comes to your home. He meets people that you live with. You know, you go back and forth. You meet some of his friends. He FaceTimes with friends, puts you on it, introduces you as being in a relationship. So it's not like people think, you know, all the comments where people say, oh, how could they give him money? Someone over the internet. We right. meet in person. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. So, so um, Becky, he was trying to hit you up for money as well for this board, for his yes. um, studio. So um, yes. he also wanted you to help him with the mortgage payment for the building. Yes, I paid three thousand dollars of the mortgage payment. So we have your list here. Mm -hmm. OK, so how much do you um do you um, estimate that he owes you? It's uh, it was probably around thirty five thousand, but um, I gave him the forty five hundred for the board, and then I did pay two thousand dollars for um, the rent for the old studio. And because of the way I did it through friends and family through PayPal, not right. friends and family, did it through business. Mm -hmm. I was able to recoup that money, you know, at least over six thousand dollars. Back, so he owes me a little over twenty-seven, maybe twenty-eight thousand dollars, and he knows he owes it. So, unlike the other ladies, it seems like Mocha doesn't directly attack you in his stories yeah. when he goes on rants. I mean, yesterday he posted this, and this is kind of close to where you are, but not so yeah. close. Like he's trying yeah. to, you know, make it make an indirect statement you know what i mean yeah so that's how, that's how he does it yes so in your experience with him when you started speaking out did he like call you and say what's going on text you trying to give you some line of bullshit about the other no. ladies in fact in october of last year he reached out to me and wanted to have to meet me and have a conversation in person with me and basically he sent me a text 
stating that, you know, he wanted to have a conversation in person with me, even though I had said some nasty things about him, he wanted to apologize and keep me posted moving forward. Now that's a little He's going to allow you lure you back in allow you. (laughs) Oh, Mm -hmm. yeah. How nice of him. Right. Right. Ladies. He's he's going to allow you. Yeah. It's his way to lure you back in. Right. Right. And he has, he has no plans on paying me back my money, even though he says that he's going to do right by me. And, you know, I'm a cool chick and, you know, I have every right to be very, very mad. You know, no, because- that, no, no, no. Because if you turn on him, that's yeah. when he thinks that the money he owes you now it's null and void because you turned on him. You don't work right. like that. You owe somebody some money. You owe him money. Period. <laughs> yes. Right. Period. Yes. I totally agree. I mean, he, his line of thinking, I mean, I've been following this story for a while. I've been listening to his rants and his line of thinking. I'm like, dude, it doesn't work that way. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh, you're not on my side anymore. You turned against me. I don't have nothing for you. I'm only going to help take care of the people that stayed down with me. Like, it don't work that way. You owe the people money no matter what. Right. Yeah. <laughs> He's always talking about loyalty. I mean, he, it's always about they weren't loyal to me. I heard that from the beginning. I've done so much for all my artists and they, I put all this money out and they weren't loyal. So I had to cut ties. That's that was his narrative on life after lockup that mm-hmm. Montana Mills was not being loyal to him. He mm-hmm. had some nerve to get Justine pregnant and to get married. And, right. and, and Mocha saw it as, as Mike not being loyal. You know, I waited a long time for him to come out of prison. We're supposed to be making records. We're supposed to be making music. How dare he want want to get married and have a child? Like, dude, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that was kind of odd. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, we even see it, like, on the show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so, Mary, the crazy thing mm-hmm. went back that she had just received a text in October of 2023. The day prior, he had texted me as well. This was a couple of weeks after we had our court hearing because I had petitioned to have a restraining order put against him after he put up those crazy semi-naked pictures of me online. He has the nerve to send me a text um, basically apologizing for what had transpired in court that day and that he holds no bad blood against me and that he would like to sit right, that he would like to sit down and have a conversation with me. You know, thank you for holding no bad blood against me, but I still hold bad blood against him. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Don't you love it when people say, you know, I have no hard feelings, it's over. And you're like, no, I still have hard feelings. It's not over on the set. You may think it's over, but it's not over. Right. No. That message on red, because I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. Anything that has to be handled with him is going to be done legally through the courts. So I want to talk about when you ladies started to link up and started comparing stories what was going through your head? Like when Tammy, when you first spoke to Becky at the first time for, for the first time, after you hung up the phone, how were you able to process that you just spoke to another woman who was seeing your boyfriend at the same time as you? It almost seems unreal. Cause you know, at this point you're processing so many things. And I'm like, the, the biggest thing was, okay, I got got like I got got and you feel embarrassed, hurt, stupid, just all kinds of things. The emotions were just through the roof. It it took me a minute to sit back and process everything. But in talking to Becky and several other women from other states coming to find out that he was dealing with us all in the exact same time frame, it, it was just too much. I had talked to women in Oregon, another woman in California, 
not too far from Becky. Um, it was and Sammy, what state are you in? I'm in Arizona. So you see, he's he's traveling everywhere. <laughs> he gets around. Yes, he gets around. So um, I just want to show how Mocha continues to lie. I mean, even about silly things like he wanted everyone to think that he was going to be on this past season of Life After Lockup where he wasn't on the season at all. He like post this check to make everybody think that he's going to be on the show. And I could almost guarantee you after shooting someone live on YouTube, you would never be on the show again, Mocha. Okay. I mean, I almost can guarantee you that. But another thing, he's allegedly lying about his STD status. Which one of you ladies want to take this on? Ooh. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Nikki, go ahead. You want to start, Nikki? Okay, so magically, I don't know how, but his STD test showed up in my inbox. Um, The numbers were super high for HSV. Now he wants to say that it's lies. Um, we, we doctored it up. No, we didn't. <laughs> no, we didn't. It um, is what it Nikki, is. I he did also have a claims that he served you with a cease and desist, right? Right. No, I've never gotten a cease and desist. And one of the addresses he tried to show, like, this is your address. It was like, that's years ago address you know and it's funny to me how he wants to say I served her with a cease and desist and I don't have one because he could have just simply did it like his partner Mills did Mills sent me a cease and desist because I had made a comment about their repair business right and they wanted me to shut that down so he's not my target anyway so okay but he was able to get me one why can't Mocha get me one I haven't gotten one has he tried to serve you, Becky, with a cease and desist? Oh, nothing at all. He has no grounds because he knows he owes the money and he knows that he scammed me out of it, thinking that we were building a relationship and we were building businesses together and that, you know, everything was going to be good between us. It was all a lie. He he grooms you is what he does. First, he doesn't ask you for money. He grooms you. Mm -hmm. He basically sells you a dream. Is that right, Tammy? Absolutely. Absolutely. But when you turn on him, that's when everything goes left. Yes. Yeah. But if you notice, he always starts out with a, um, when he meets the women, it's like almost immediately from the get go, he's going through some, something he's going through some hard times. Like, um, let, let's take, for example, his father. Um, yeah. Oh, I had to pay for his cancer treatments. His father lived in Canada. Healthcare is free. What are you talking about? And then, oh, I had to pay for this and this and that. You didn't even go to his funeral. Stop with the sad dad story. It's kind of like the sad daughter story. <clears throat> he does that as well. He does. Um, he's always in some like situation right now to where he's unable to access his funds but oh he's got all this going on like right now like the construction for the studio he's using that as like look what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make so much money I'm gonna pay you back and I don't know who he's lying to or who he thinks he's talking to but he's like oh Drake's gonna come to my studio man that is like the most <laughs> <laughs> craziest <laughs> lie in the world and i can't believe people believe the him. day drake shows up to his studio is the day pigs Girl, are flying past my window this, okay it, the buildings <laughs> in like crack alley freaking las vegas stop it okay and and for for viewers of the show if you remember on the season that mocha was on with Montana Mills. And he was making this big production about Mike being in Vegas and Vegas is his town. And he arranged um, a show for Mike to um, perform, the one that Brie 
went to when she was in that scene. In that club, there was maybe 10 people. <laughs> I swear, I was cracking up at that they, scene. They had Brie like... was one of them, Nikki. Brie <laughs> yes, was one of yes, them. Yes, yes. And they had them like perfectly situated, like COVID situated to kind of make it look like there was more. <laughs> exactly. But he's such a hot shot in his own hometown, in his own own town that he got about 10 people. Listen, he posts, he tries to scare the women with his, I'll drag you on social media. But I knew that was a lie because all his followers are fake. The last live he had, he had six followers. He had 12 comments. Half of them were him. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Just he's like, not talking to anybody. He can say these whatever These magazine he wants covers, about. Nikki. If you were to look at these fake magazines that he's been on these covers, I mean, you would think that this guy is successful. You but would. It's all a facade. On first look. Yes, it's all a facade. It, it's yeah. all a facade and it's all bullshit. So my and question is, how does Mocha keep, first of all, how is he able to, to keep his gun after this whole incident or to be able to have a gun right now? Well, they haven't charged him, so they can't take him away if they're right. legally, you know what I mean? They're, right. They're legally owned by him. They can't so take him away. He just sits there flashing guns on live whenever he feels like it. And he just goes on and on with his stupid little rants. This POS sits here and he mocks and he mocks the death of a good man that had a lot of friends and did a lot of good in the community. And he's walking around smiling, laughing, making jokes, mocking people. This is, this is another reason why I'm not going to stop getting in his ass. Yep. Because he killed, you know, someone that, that was loved by many. And it looks like he's not serving any consequences for it as of right no. now. And he thinks he's going to get away with it, but we're not going to stop. There is um, a wrongful death suit against him from the family. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because if you read the detective's report and the police report, not, not the actual, like the detective's report, the investigation report, if you read it, so much stuff contradicts so much other stuff. Mm-hmm. And he likes to go on and he likes to lie about it. And then he says, hit my DM if you want a copy of it. Man, if Mocha ever had any proof of anything he's ever over there saying, doing, like why he's dragging women, if he had proof of half of the stuff he said about that, he would post it. He posts yeah. everything and yes. like that if he's got it. Yes. Um, the, the police report, the detective's report, hit my DM. If you want to read it after he makes a whole lie. So then I have to start posting parts of it and showing, Hey, look, this is what happened. Hey, look, this is per the investigation report. It just shows he lies about everything, everything. Yeah. I have a question that I want answered because I wasn't even aware um, of the 911 call that came in from Arizona right after the shooting. Um, Vanessa, the reporter from Las Vegas, had asked me if I was the woman who made that 911 call since it did come in from Arizona, and it wasn't me. So if Bree was his girlfriend at the time of the shooting, why is another woman from Arizona, other than me, thinking that that's my boyfriend, why is another woman calling in saying that her boyfriend was involved in a shooting? He's never addressed that. Wow. That's true. He has it. Mm -mm. So another woman called 911 along with Mocha that day? Yeah, Vanessa, the reporter, was able to uncover that. Wow. And she had a, I was that woman who made that call. It wasn't me. So there's yet another woman. There's too many inconsistencies in his story of the shooting. Wow. They need to take another look at that. The investigators really need to take another look into this case. Unbelievable. So, um, Becky, what mm -hmm. advice would you give to a woman 
that's in a relationship, what are the first red flags that you would say that I your say, man your man is potentially not all that he seems to be? Especially when he starts talking about his money is, is funny or that um, he's never had a real good relationship and you're 40 something years old, there's a problem there. Or it's the first time he asks you for money. Don't do it. I was advised next time, get a private detective, have yes. him go ahead and do a thorough background check, even though I did look through everything I could, but everything seemed so real on his online persona that, you know, and he could show stuff like I've been to the studio, I've been to the barbershop, I, I've been to the building, I spent the night in the building, I've been there several times. So all that stuff kind of added up. So even though they're showing you that they have something, when you feel that inner feeling, don't, don't ignore it. Becky, how long did it take him to hit you up for money? I want to say in, uh, a little after June, he was coming back. Um, he was here in California. He was going to stop by and see me, but it was really late. So he was going on his way home. He was $3,000 short from being able to get the keys for the building. So that was the closing cost. And he was really upset. So you know, at first I didn't say anything about it because, you know, I didn't think he'd actually take the money from me. Right. And he was upset because he didn't have the money. So I went ahead and I offered and I gave him $3,000. That was the first time. And then he never asked me for any money from that point until he came back from Thailand after the first of the year. And then that's when, you know, the $12,000 for the phase one of the construction, you know, the board, the electric bill, the water bill, his phone and, bill. And you also sent money to his daughter. I did. He asked me, um, can I get one, one last favor? That was always his thing. One last favor, baby, one last favor. And he said that his daughter needed money for her Muay Thai training. And it's his daughter. And you know what, giving it to a kid was fine with me, but, you know, but to ask you for money for your daughter. So I didn't mind sending the $250. I, he gave me her number. I text back and forth with her. And then I, I Venmoed her the money. Tammy, how long did it take him to hit you up for money once you started dating? Um, It was a few months into it. And I almost feel like it was a test because it was something real small. As everybody knows, he claims to be in to Muay Thai and boxing and whatnot. He asked me if I would buy this specific pair of boxing gloves for him that were about close to $400. And I was like, sure, you know, again, you're thinking this is your man. That's a small thing. I can gift him some boxing gloves. But looking back, that was probably a test to see if he could get anything out of me. And then it became more and more. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's what he does. Mm -hmm. He just slowly lures you in. And before you know it, you're just funding his lifestyle, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, it's, yeah. It's never, it's never, I need it. It's for us. It's like, we you know, we, and if you notice on the Texas, it says, how much do we have left on the credit card, baby? How much do we? Yes. Yes. It's yes. never, you know, anything else in that. So you think, you know, you're in this relationship. You're like, okay, he's struggling like a good woman's going to do. He's struggling. I'm going to help my man be successful. And as we both gain together, you know, this, this will be good for both of us. But I mean, I already had, you know, I have my own business. I have, you know, I work a job. So, you know, I, I wanted to help him and then in tune, we would go ahead and work on mine. So that's why I did it. But obviously that was a big lie. How often did you see him in person, Becky? Uh, twice a month, sometimes a little more. Um, and, and you, then some. And you, Tammy, mm -hmm. how, 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 how many times would you see him in person? Pretty infrequently, sometimes a couple of times a month, sometimes only once a month. And that was under the premise that he was always so busy. He had 
stuff going on with the studio, stuff going on with this and that. But, you know, now looking back, you come to realize, no, because he's got so many women in his rotation that he's mm -hmm. got to spend time with. Right. And truly, he doesn't have the time. So he was right. kind of telling you the truth, but not he, you know, he for a good reason. He breadcrumbs you. Yeah, exactly. His hustle is hustling women. He's not exactly. out the streets doing whatever, because if he is, if he's like he claims, oh, I'm, I'm a street guy, I'm an enforcer. He's the brokest enforcer I've ever seen in my life. That is the truth. That mm -hmm. is well, the truth. The hustling is the one thing maybe that he's actually honest with in his life because he is hustling, but he's hustling women. Exactly. Exactly. So before we wrap this up, Nikki, if Mocha's listening, what would you like to tell him? And I'm going to give <laughs> all I, you ladies no, a I chance. I don't have nothing to say to him. <laughs> I don't have nothing to say to him. <laughs> Just watch out, buddy. I'm not giving up. I'm not going away anytime soon. I'm on your ass. There you go. <laughs> Becky, what's your message to him? It's going to be business as usual. Business as usual. And I, I know he's not going to pay the money, but if we have to go to court, see you in court. And you'll get a judgment against him too. Mm -hmm. How about I you, will. Tammy? What do you have to say to him? Like I told him in a text message, karma's coming for him and I'm going to help it in any way I can. We're not going to stop. There you go. Thank you, ladies, for joining me. I, I, I've been so waiting patiently as this story has unfolded. And I'm just so excited to finally sit down and share it with all my subscribers. I mean, they've been listening to me babble for about a year on how Mocha's a scammer. So now everything is coming together and I just want to thank you ladies. Do you have um a last message for my subscribers? Nikki, I'll start with you. Well, you know what? No, I just wanted to say this because I don't think this got up there. Uh -huh. When the News 8 interviews happened, he had every opportunity to give his side as the reporter reached out to him. He did not say anything. He did not want to talk about it it he he squandered that opportunity um for him to say that we paid her or oh she's in the group i'm not going to interview she of course she was in the group she had to get the story that's where and, she did her research in the group yeah. mocha come on yeah yeah <laughs> and um he had every opportunity and he squandered his story so now whatever he wants to wrap rant and rave about on his IG. Of course, he wants to tell his story on his platform that he so he can control the whole narrative and not have to answer the hard questions. Exactly. Exactly. And he doesn't I mean, his following doesn't seem real to me. Like you pointed out, it's Nikki, not. I mean, I watch his <laughs> lives and there's maybe about 10 people in the lives. It's like for for someone having so many followers, what's going on here? <laughs> well, I because I'm just sitting back waiting because we all know what's going to happen once this story airs. The attacks are going to start again. Yes, of course. Of we course. already it's coming. Well, just like his friends Mills said in the one life that they had together, basically, okay, you have the so-called hate group. So I would worry more about the truth than the lies. You keep saying that they're lies. I wouldn't worry about the lies. Worry if they're telling the truth. And that's the problem. He knows we're telling the truth. And Mills wanted receipts. We brought them. Have and you heard from Mills since this whole since this whole thing exploded, except for the cease and desist he sent you, Nikki? <laughs> no. <laughs> So Mills has nothing to say about all this. I'm just curious. Well, I he mean, has... why would he? I mean, I would be like, oh, whoa. No. Hey, he was all like <laughs> free, free my man Mocha self-defense. And now he's like really, really quiet. Of course he well, is. He's got, a family. he's got a family. He's got to take care of his family. That's all he worries about. Exactly. You know, he's trying to live his life. And, you know, that's what he needs to do. I'm sure he doesn't want to go back to the penitentiary hanging around the likes of Mocha Blast. No, part. I don't think so. Exactly. <laughs> no. Not a good look to be mixed in with Lydell. No, no. exactly. 
exactly. Well, I want to thank you ladies for joining me today and sharing your story. And um, like Tammy says, karma is a bitch. <laughs> and it comes back to bite you in the ass. I totally believe in that too. So yep. watch out, Mocha Blast. There's a bunch of women out there that want your ass. That's all I have to say. <laughs> and not in a good way. Not in a good way at all. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, ladies, for joining me. Thank Thanks, you, everybody, Mary. watching. Thanks. And see you next time. See ya.